Okay, this is the bottom of another one of my systems, and this system is a lot more of an aquatic solution than an aquaponic solution, but yet it has many of the same features and many of the same production capacity. Number one, this tank here I primarily have goldfish in. It's kind of cold, and the water, as you can see, is abundantly clear. There's one little fish down there. And because the water's so clear and I'm standing here, the evil monster has a shadow cast on them, so they have all fled underneath their little habitat, which is just made up of cinder blocks. So we won't see them swimming around much today, uh, but during the regular part of the day, they're around a lot. Uh, you can see I have two, basically, wicking beds, just by sticking a pot with holes in the bottom in here and soil with gravel in the bottom. Uh, this one is chestnut. That one over there has some daikon coming up out of it because I threw some seed in there just for the hell of it. But... It's growing ground nuts, uh, which are a uh, perennial uh, tuber crop that were very important to Native Americans in the Northeast. It's way too hot here to grow them in most areas. They like to be on shady creek banks, so I have given them a shady creek bank. Uh, some pickerel rush coming up and some other aquatic plants that help with the health of the system. But this system will have a lot of edible plants in it once we get past the cold part of the year, which I think we're just about to do. And I'll show you some edible plants in other parts of the system. So what you see right there is the return line. That's just a basic gravity return. And there's your delivery line. That's coming off of a pump. It's the exact same pump that's in the system that we just came from in the last video. And I have standardized on that pump. I have one of those pumps sitting on the shelf. I have three systems using those pumps. If one of that one system has a pump go down, pump comes off shelf, goes in, order a new pump, put on shelf. That way uh, we can maintain multiple systems with one spare part because the odds of them all going down at the same time are pretty low. Again, you can see the water clarity is just unbelievable here. And uh, we're pretty proud of that. I've got one weed growing there. That's a, let's see if I can do this without breaking my neck. Um, the beauty of a system like this is this. Yeah, not a problem, huh? I'll leave that there. We'll take that to the chickens. And again, water, water chestnut, one of the most productive crops in the world. I think it is the most productive crop by weight per square foot in the world. And uh, the little ground nuts are starting to come up over there. Some soft rush. We just got that out of a pond we were hunting at. Anyway, so again, water's returned. Water's being delivered. That delivery comes up here. And what we have three oval tanks, about 170 gallons a piece. Again, we're still one pump. We have two wicking beds on the sides because these work aesthetically. Right? That means they looked pretty and my wife didn't think they looked ugly. So uh, by being able to put them on the sides. When I, I wanted to put a third one in the center, but it kind of just messed everything up really bad. It uh, just took away from the way that the system looks overall. And it took away access here to this tank to be able to do things. So by having these three tanks, what it's given me is the ability to segregate fish species based on the fact that they'll eat each other otherwise. This tank actually has, uh, you won't see them this early in the day, the bullhead catfish in it. There's probably about a dozen in here. They were kind of small when I put them in. They've gotten up to about 10, 11 inches. They're eating size already. But I'm waiting to see if maybe they'll breed for me. I created a whole little breeding colony down there for them. And you'll notice an absence of snails in this tank because they eat snails. Well, the snails are growing like crazy in the other tank down there at the end. So every day I take a handful of snails and drop it in there and help feed my bullheads. So. There you go on that. In this uh, wicking bed, we got some uh, scarlet runner beans that'll be trained on this trellis in the back. A whole bunch of arugula. The red stuff is orange. Got a couple pepper plants, a couple squash plants that we'll let vine down over here and see how they do. Uh, but the beauty here is we can fertilize this soil without disrupting this system with solid organic fertilizer. So we can give these plants all they need with solid organic fertilizer and foliar feed because they're not going to get a enough nutrient out of this system because we're not going to heavily overstock it like we do with an aquaponic system back there. Now, what we have here is two inch return lines down there that actually do the return plumbed into each tank with a two inch bulkhead. But as a stop or safe measure to help keep all of these equaled out if one of these water flows gets disrupted, we have a simple water bridge. This is simply a siphon and it works just like it looks here. You fill it up, you flip it over, Keep it level, and it acts exactly like you had another bulkhead system in here, and it keeps these two tanks level with each other. We have one here as well. These are pretty foolproof, and uh, they're a good, safe measure, and they're cheap as anything to build, right? You don't have to put any holes in things. And we've set up systems where the whole system runs just off of these. 
If you're gonna do that, I'd say you need more than one of them and bigger diameter. If you go bigger diameter and you're segregating fish like I am, put some little uh, filters on the bottom so your fish, because they will swim up and through. Center tank is koi, and this is a grow out tank for koi for a larger system that I'll be building soon. And uh, this keeps them from being beat up by the bluegills in one of the other systems, and it keeps them all in one place. I can pull everything out, net everybody, move them to a new system, and then figure out what I want to do with this one next. And then here's a crop. How's that? This is a watercress. Yeah. It's very happy in this spot, so we're letting it there. Here's mint, some dill, some nasturtiums, some more beans, some cilantro, in the other wicking bed. So the way these work is I have a primary delivery line here, which agitates water, and then I have a secondary delivery line that comes to each wicking bed, and we're doing a very slow trickle. And again, if that clogs up, and it will, I have to come out about once a day and unclog these, but it can clog up for a couple days and it won't matter because there's plenty of water down in these beds to, uh, to allow them to, to sustain themselves for quite a while. And they're not important to the health of the system as a whole because we have plenty of water movement without them. That two inch line comes right there, down into the ground, pops up right there. The height of that um, return line right there where the exit point is, Sets the level of the water back there. That overflows to a overflow point there, right back to where we started with uh, that pipe setting the level of this tank. So all the tank's levels are set by the return line on the other side of them, very, very simple. If I wanna hold more water up there, all I gotta do is move that up a little bit. If I wanna hold less, all I gotta do is move that down. This system's completely passive, uh, other than the pump. And it, it, it will run like it's doing right now off that one pump and there's no reason that system couldn't extend way the hell out the other side of the yard there's plenty of power left in that pump and we're doing very little with ebb and flow in fact we're doing nothing with ebb and flow in this system so there's really nothing to fail as long as the water keeps moving the system keeps running and it's somewhat infinitely expandable this tank is primarily ornamental koi a fairly large fish uh, they're about 10 inches but they're also all hiding it's cold this morning you can see some minnows flying around in there oh yeah this is my minnow tank, this guy with all the vegetation. And that's why if they're koi in here, they'd eat, be eating all the salvinia and all the watercress and everything. But this tank is just lousy with uh, fathead minnows. So what I do is I'll come here in the summer, and if I have, let's say, koi or tilapia in one of these tanks, I'll take a big handful of salvinia, plop, then I'll take a big dip of minnows, and I'll take them to where we're going to see in the next video, drop those minnows in and feed the... Uh, Feed the sunfish. Not sustainable? <laughs> no says I, man. This is sustainable. This is, uh, I guarantee you, I'm using much less electricity to run these three pumps than most people are using to run the air conditioning in their house. And uh, look at everything around it. Yeah, we got sustainability in spades here, guys. We got regeneration in spades. Right, Fox? Okay, we'll catch up with you with the last system, the least complex of the three.